everybody, what's going on? Hellmite here, bringing you another video from Grab the Lantern today. Today, I wanted to talk about Yone and finally give my review on this champion now that I've had some opportunities to play him and some opportunities to play against him and kind of get a feel for where this champion is at. Now, first and foremost, I will say Yone is ridiculously fun to play in the sim similar fashion to Yasuo being really fun to play. I mean, these are the kinds of champions that are just ridiculously fun because they don't have resources to manage. They have plenty of mobility. They have plenty of room for outplay. They never really feel like the kinds of champions where you have to really think about what you're doing. I can remember release week Azir being very difficult to kind of get your head around and say, okay, hold on. What do I, what am I doing on this champion? What do his buttons do? What do I want to be trying to set up on him? Whereas Yone is definitely a Yasuo type champion that he just kind of does stuff and gets away with it. And it's great. So that is a lot of fun. Now I will say he feels a little bit overtuned at the moment. Um, I, if I can execute on this champion and he's very much so not the kind of champion I normally play, then I believe he is a little bit overtuned. That's not that big of a deal in all honesty. I don't think it's a significant problem with Yone. Um, but I do think that he is likely to receive nerf probably in a month or two after the player base has fully gotten their, their come to grips with the champion and kind of figured out how to optimize on him properly. So there is that if you are looking to pick up Yone, I would expect some nerfs in the future. But in the meantime, get that LP while you can as he is quite fun. Now, I know in my sort of preview, I said it felt like he wasn't going to be much of an assassin. He felt like kind of a hybrid Zed Yasuo, and that is still true, but he actually does have a very much so assassin-like playstyle, and you can actually kind of see me do this here, where Yone's threat range is absolutely massive thanks to his E and his Q3. Soul Unbound lets Yone really get in on enemies, and on top of the Q3 movement as well, Yone just has this ginormous threat range. Like, we're already used to backing off to maximum range when Yasuo has his Q3 primed. With Yone, you have to back off even further because this champion can cover so much distance and get on top of you and all of a sudden get a good trade in by using his um, shield slash ability, get that shield, get a couple more damage in, proc something like Electrocute or Dark Harvest, and then immediately dash back to his shadow without leaving you any room for, um, for outplay. In fact, there is even uh, Soul Unbound gives you Unstoppable on the reactivation, which first of all has some funny interactions with Mordekaiser because even if you cast it during Mordekaiser's Death Realm, you can just leave Death Realm with Yone E, which is a little ridiculous, but you can also use it if you're if you're able to time it well enough, like in this scenario here, you can use it to dash all the way out of enemy crowd control effects and just kind of cleanse them as you're dashing back to safety. So I do feel like that's a pretty absurd ability for Yone to have. Um, it, now, it is getting fixed a little bit. Yone will not be able to use his E to just leave Mordekaiser Death Realm at will uh, in the coming patches. Um, but currently, it still does give him Unstoppable, which means that you do kind of get to ignore enemy drowsy crowd control effects. As long as you can press it as a stun, for example, is coming at you, at you, you can just kind of ignore that stun entirely. It's a very, very powerful ability on top of the threat range it already gives Yone, on top of the pop death mark-like effect it gives. So actually absurd ability i'm a big fan of it and i think it does help yone feel like an assassin he doesn't feel like yasuo who kind of needs to dash through the wave and kind of either play for small advantages or who needs to go for something really crazy he yone really can sort of trade very effectively and then dash back to safety and wants to be looking for these kind of executes like i said with soul unbound q3 combo um now all that being said he does have some limited mobility for an assassin, which sounds weird, but when you consider the mobility Yone has on his kit, um, Q3 is his only free targeted dash outside of his ultimate ability, which will stop the second he hits an enemy champion. So when if an enemy champion is directly on top of Yone and he ults to try and go back to safety, he's just going to teleport behind that champion, which if they're right next to him means he's not really traveling that far. Q3 is the only uh, free targeted dash he's got, and Soul Unbound re always returns him to where he was before, unlike LeBlanc. He does not get a choice about whether or not he wants to go back. He has to. So it's an option sometimes to just kind of camp his shadow and say, hey, I'll wait for you to come back. You have to. Um, so there is kind of that way to outplay Yone in that regard. And even that being said, Q3 can't even go over walls. Or sorry, Q3 can, but uh, Soul Unbound cannot go over walls. So 
it really means that Yone is an assassin with low mobility, which sounds weird, but it also means that he's actually vulnerable to being ganked because unless he's got his Q3 primed, he doesn't have much of an option of running out of a situation. His only real survivability is to use the Spirit Slash to get a shield and maybe survive in that regard, but other than that, he doesn't really have a way to walk out of things. So there have been plenty of times where I've basically said, it's outplay or die time because I'm not going to be able to run to safety. I have to either kill somebody and get myself to safety by murdering them, or I have to try and dodge the skill shots to get to a Q3 to get myself out. It's it's a weird dichotomy. It's a weird situation to be in as someone who's supposed to be an assassin because we're all used to champions like Zed and LeBlanc and uh, Shaco just kind of being able to nope out of a fight the second they decide, hey, I don't actually want to take this. So it is a bit of a weird uh, dichotomy, but he's also got better DPS um, than a regular assassin, so there is sort of a trade-off there. And especially his ult's cooldown is such a low cooldown. I feel like you always have Fate Sealed available, so you almost always have room to go for the outplay, to use Soul Unbound to dodge initial skill shots, start stacking up damage, use your ult to stall for a little bit more time, then pop back to your uh, your clone once enemies have chased you away. There's a lot of options for Yone to get the, the big brain outplays that he needs in order to survive gank situations, so that is nice that he does have the ability to go for these kinds of things. Um, now, I do think that in his current state, he could potentially see pro play. I feel like he has really good matchups into low mobility mages, especially like Zoe. I really feel like there's nothing Zoe does in this matchup in particular, um, but there are other champions as well that I can see Yone doing really well into. I do think he's more of a mid laner than a top laner because of his play pattern. He wants a squishy champion so he can make the most of his, um, his E, Q3, auto attack W, proccing electrocute, and then return to his shadow before enemies can can deal with him before they have a chance to trade back on him. That's going to be most effective against squishier targets rather than someone durable. I feel like a Juggernaut just doesn't really care about what Yone tries to do. Someone like Garen or Darius just take the fight and win it. So I feel like he's not going to be great in the top lane, but he will be very good in mid lane against these kind of squishy and mobile mages. Um, I feel like he's going to be good into even some more mobile assassins and that kind of deal because he does have the ability to just kind of use his Q spam and um, whittle them down from a, um, from a fairly close in. So I do think he has a potential to see pro play, but like I said, I think he's going to get nerfed probably within a month or two after players really learn to maximize and get this character into a good spot. So I wouldn't expect it to, I wouldn't expect him to see very much play after that point, as I do think that there are a lot more assassins that do his job better than he does. Um, champions like Echo, champions like Zed, I really do feel like, or champions like the Blanc, I feel like they do what Yone wants to do, but more efficiently and more effectively. So at the end of the day, probably no pro play, but he's definitely in a good spot. Um, I would definitely say, I know it's the, the, the dream here, but I would not run Yone and Yasuo on the same team. You just don't have a spot for the both of them. One of them has to go top lane, which is not really where they want to be. And in general, it means that you don't have a front line, and Yone really needs someone to step up and make space for him. He can't really brute force a team fight in the way that um, other juggernauts kind of can or other fighters kind of can. He really needs someone to go in first and set him up for the fate sealed in order to start getting damage down. Now, he can be an incredibly efficient team fight threat because he can apply the death mark to multiple units at the same time and then pop back and get a bunch of damage all at the same time while getting himself to safety. There's a lot of opportunities for Yone to make some plays there, but someone has to go in and set him up first. He's not going to make it happen on his own, and Yasuo does not really help with that. You're basically saying, hey, Yone, be the initiation, and neither one of those champions will live very long. So, would not recommend, but of course, you are free to do whatever you like uh, in your own game. So, if you guys do end up playing Yasuo and Yone and finding some success on it, let me know. I would love to see you guys play the brothers together. So... Either way, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Let me know how you've been finding Yone in the last couple of weeks, what you've been building on him, how you've been playing him, what kind of success you see. Would love to hear your guys' thoughts down in the comments section below. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and leave a like. And if you really enjoyed today's video, consider subscribing. I upload a video every Monday, Friday, and on patch days as well. Once again, thank you guys so very much for watching. I do appreciate it. And I'll talk to you all later.